So today we're going to go over um, a different sort of wall type. So we've already gone over the generic wall type and then kind of what the stack does um, in with that. Um, but there is a very different wall type, this storefront uh, curtain wall exterior glazing wall type down here. Uh, works in a very different way from those other two. Um, curtain wall, exterior glazing, storefront, they're all built in here. They are all the exact same thing. Um, it's just that uh, exterior glazing and curtain wall are lacking pieces that storefront already has built in. Um, so I personally never use these two. I always use the storefront one. And then, um, and since it already has everything built into it that I, that I would want. Um, and then I'll delete things as I need to, as opposed to having to build in the grid, the mullions, and all of that other stuff um, into this curtain wall and exterior glazing one. So I'm going to focus mostly on this storefront one. So I'm going to draw this, draw a quick... Um, version of this here and let's make this a little bit longer so we can see a little bit more panels here. So in 3D what this has is this has built into it um, some mullions. It's got a horizontal grid and a vertical grid already built into it that the mullions are constrained to. Um, so if I add a curtain grid here I can pull in and select something here and add and it'll automatically add that um, the mullions across there. So I'm going to undo that. Um, but the basics of this are the, the similar. So you've got your base constraint, your top constraint. I could make this an unconnected. Um, is it room bounding? All of that stuff starts to come into play. Now the vertical grid, I have the justification at the beginning, the end, the center. So do you want your grid to start in the middle and then work its way out and then any leftovers are the leftovers from there? Or do you want to start at an end run all the way along and then whatever is left over at one end is the leftover. Um, you can change the angle so let's say I make this 45 degrees now it's going to change the orientation of my mullions um, and then the offset is something that like that corresponds to the beginning so if I have it set to the beginning here and I offset it a foot now my pattern is going to shift one foot to the right um, horizontal grid, exact same thing. Um, and then is this a structural wall or not? Typically, since this is a storefront, probably not. Um, and then these are all your generic stuff that's associated with it. Where things get a little bit different is under this edit type. Um, so now I've got our basic construction stuff, um, but then also this automatically embed. I can show you kind of how that works. Um, if I create a wall that is not, let's say I just have a generic six inch wall here, and then I'm going to create a storefront. If I draw over the top of this, this wall, it's going to automatically cut that out. Um, and if this was, say, taller than that by, say, three feet, it's going to automatically insert that into that wall. So that is what the automatically embed uh, icon is. Um, the curtain panel, so right now it's just glazed, so that's just showing that all of these are, the default is that they are glass. I can select any wall type I want here, so if I want brick on half inch, I can change that, and then my mullion stay, but then I have whatever wall type I put in there as my panel type. Um, I am going to change that back to glazed apply. Um, join conditions. So if you look closely here, um, you can see that my verticals are taking precedent. They're running continuous all the way through, and then my horizontals are just spanning in between there. Um, so that's what this is telling me, is the vertical grid is continuous. There are a bunch of options here. Uh, do you want the border and the vertical grid continuous? So if I change to that and hit apply, now you can see that my verticals aren't cutting this anymore. Um, they're stopping at the border, and then my verticals take precedent over anything that's cutting through the center of my panel here. Um, and then the vertical grid, 
Uh, this is where you can set up your grid. Do you want the maximum spacing of five foot? And then basically everything, it assumes the number. It's going to go to five foot, start a new one, go to five foot, start a new one. And then whatever is left over, it's going to adjust everything so that you get equal spacing all the way through. If I change this to say seven foot and hit apply, now it's going to make these probably aren't exactly seven foot. They're a little less than that, but they're equally spaced with a maximum distance of seven foot. Um, so I'm going to go back to five foot there. I can change to fixed distance. Um, do I want them all to be five foot? If I make them five foot, then I got five foot, five foot, five foot, five foot. Um, but then I've got a little bit extra here. You can see how thick this is over here because it's started. I'm at twenty foot three, so it started another panel here and I just have a little goofy amount left over there um, so let's say let's say I did four foot here you'll see it a little bit more prominently there whoop not four inches okay so here I'm starting to get a little bit more um, I still have a little bit of a, a goofy end here um, Let's make this four and a half foot. Let's see if we can get this to, there we go. Okay, so now, since my justification is on the left here, it's going four and a half foot, 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 and then whatever's left is left. Um, I can change that um, based on my justification that I created here with the vertical and horizontal grids. Um, and make it so it's centered and then this distance would end up being split on either end or I could just move everything to this end and put that over on the other end. Um, so that's fixed distance. Um, I can also do a fixed number. Um, if I hit OK here, now my number over here is 4. I can hit 3, 5, um, and it's going to change that accordingly. Um, same thing for your horizontal um, numbers, so there's maximum spacing, there's minimum spacing, that sort of thing. Um, now what is your, what are the profiles of your mullions? Right now they're just rectangular, two and a half by five inch. Uh, you could create your own profile or you can select your own, um, the defaults here. So uh, I could make my verticals circular if I wanted. Um, I could make my horizontals something different. Um, that's all where you can control kind of what the look of your your frame is. Um, now, if let's say I wanted to move just this one mullion here, um, what I can do is I can tab through. So you can see when I grab this, I'm grabbing the entire wall, or I can grab an individual piece, or I can tab through and grab the grid line here. So if I grab the grid line, it's got this little uh, pin on it. If I unpin this, I, it's no longer constrained by what I set up within the wall. Let's say I want this to be four foot now. I can adjust that accordingly, um, or I can delete that. Um, let's hit add remove segments and turn that off. So I can get rid of that particular instance altogether. So maybe I've got a door that's going in here and I need to break my spacing a little bit, I can change that and go through and do that. Um, I can also delete individual mullions. So if I'm putting a door in here, I can delete that, unpin this, and delete that. And so I've got that in there. Now, putting doors in storefronts um, is not the way you put them in anywhere else. Um, to put a door in a storefront, you can't just hover over it and place it. Uh, what you have to do is select a panel. So I'm going to tab and grab this panel here. I'm going to unpin it. And then right now, it's showing as a glazed um, portion. But what I can do is hit this edit type and hit load. And then in doors, there are curtain wall doors here. So I can say I want this curtain wall double storefront open. And it's going to load that in there. And if I hit OK, now it just puts a door in there. Um, and it'll show the swings and everything. Um, now, the issue, um, the issue with 
with this sort of thing is it's going to you got to have your grid line set up appropriately so if if I grab this grid line that's over here if I can find it there it is um, if I unpin this and let's say I make this four feet it's automatically going to shrink my door down so that door is not a set size so right now it's a 511 by 511 by seven foot ten and three quarters it's not a set size it's based off of whatever this panel is um, so you have to be careful not to start adjusting this and then end up with a door that's a goofy size because you didn't realize that you had started moving all this stuff around. Um, another aspect to this that you can change are you can change individual panels. So if this panel you want it to be solid uh, while the rest are glass for whatever reason. Um, you can unpin this and instead of glaze you could make it solid, you could change it to whatever wall type you want, um, all of that sort of stuff. So I could make this one solid and it would go solid versus all the others. Um, so storefronts are one of those things that you've got a generic sort of wall that you draw, but then there's a whole bunch of smaller components um, that you can grab and customize throughout the entire thing. Um, there's these curtain systems and all of that where you can place uh, new grid lines. Um, if I want to place, this one says all segments, so I can place it across the entire thing, or I can say one, one segment and it'll just go across that one little um, kind of panel there. So you can start placing that sort of stuff and it'll default select whatever frame um, you have for horizontals in there um, and place that mullion on there. So in a um, kind of generic nutshell that is uh, your storefront system. Um, as I said curtain walls are the exact same only in the curtain wall family, it does not have all the mullions and grid and all that already set up. You have to draw all that on there. So, um, I prefer to stick with this. If you want to run with uh, the curtain wall um, system and then draw it all in yourself, you can be my guest.